This week in the conversation, I have a special treat for you. A uh, prolific writer, Aleksandra Tronitska from Poland, from Lublin, Poland, uh, joins me in the conversation. So we're going to be talking about her very interesting book title, Bucky and the Worms. Interesting children book, but also everybody who reads this book immediately falls in love with it. So, uh, but before we get into this beautiful interview with uh, writer uh, uh, Alexandra Trinitska, I'm also reminding you that it's important to uh, uh, continue to support my literary effort and the best way to do it, I've been saying it for the longest now, is to get a copy of my latest novel titled Bittersweet Memories of Last Spring. So uh, as the holiday season continues to be in full swing, what a best moment for you to show a friend that you truly believe in the power of words and the power of literature. So yes, if you already have a copy, you can uh, encourage a friend also to um, get a copy. Bitter Street Memories of Last Spring is available everywhere, everywhere they sell books, including Walmart and Target too. You go to Target, get it too. So, yes. And um, I'm encouraging you also to continue to support the conversation. Uh, one of the best literary shows out there on YouTube. Um, and the best way to do so also is to, is to uh, subscribe to it. And if you subscribe, don't forget to click the notification bell. So that way, every time a video is posted, it's going to you as soon as possible. And if you take this video after you watch this, there's, there's some interest to you, let us know, let me know in the comment box uh, at the bottom of the video. And also like it too and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so. So let's get started. Again, my name is Ardeni Sma, and I'm here this morning or this evening, it depends on where you are on the planet, with an impeccable author. She's joining me from Lublin, Poland, and her name is Alexandra Trinitska. Thank you so much. I'm going to be talking about a very interesting book titled Bunky and the Rums. There you go. So it's going to be all about it this morning on my end. So to get started, Alexandra, welcome to the conversation. Thank you so much for having me today. It's my honor to be here. I'm so grateful to be here with you and I thought to introduce my literary characters who live with me actually not only in the novel but also in my life with you. So, <laughs> with you. Okay. can you show it to the audience can you show Bunky show Bunky there you go okay this is Bunky this is the Bunky princess this is Plum and this is Rodney and we are here on the cover as well beautiful so we are yeah, here with us <laughs> okay. All right. So something I always ask authors to, uh, would you please share with our audience of CSMS Magazine, who is Alexandra Trenitska? Oh, thank you so much. So, wow. Oh, yeah. Even though I know her for a long time, she's having so many projects going on. I just think I <laughs> enumerate, <laughs> enumerate the main ones. So, so first of all, I'm an assistant professor at Maria Kiriskodowska University in Dublin, Poland. And I specialize in the British literature, especially 19th century, but also 17th and 18th. And then I'm, I just, I love writing as well, but I love teaching and, and just spending time with my students and learning things together because I, I don't regard it as teaching them but I think that we learn together from each other and and then I also love writing so I'm I am writing for children or the youngest audience but also uh, for any reader who feels young at heart this is my hope <laughs> and also I, I write some 
academic works like in general we'll have a new book which is more academic but also dedicated to every reader and apart from that i'm just bunky's friend <laughs> i am just just this person who who likes surrounding myself with my imagination and uh, creating my own reality spending time in the garden or baking cakes or you know just just having my own world and hopefully i can share it with others and, and that's that's who i am <laughs> that's great isn't that what we do as authors as writers we, you know mm. we share our own personal experiences our yeah. own understanding of the world around us and then mm -hmm. we share it with humanity yeah. absolutely so just a little bit before we get to Bunky, let me ask you something here, because I know, uh, uh, let me ask you this, do you also write in, 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 in Slavic and Polish? Uh, well, thank you so much. Actually, my first book that I that I ever written was it's in Polish, but it's not published, so it's in my desk. <laughs> it's in my desk, it's not, but it's very long, it's huge, but it's not published. I, I have to start this process so yeah I, I enjoy writing both in polish and in english because i feel that every tale deserves a different language because languages are like open door to a different world of meaning and even the way we see things perceive them uh, touch them it, it all depends on the language and each language offers some unique magic and it, it cannot be repeated in any other language so i, I like writing in, in different languages is it, fair to, is it fair if I say Alexandra Trinitska is a multi-linguist? Oh, thank you. I, oh, it, it would be a dream. I mean, I, I just I, I speak um, Polish and and uh, English, and also I, I love I, I love studying Greek. So it's not it's not a lot, but I I just love languages. I just love languages so much. I wish I had more time to expand this interest. <laughs> okay, so let's go now to Bunky and the Wrongs. The story begins, oh, by the way, Bunky is the protagonist of this novel. There you go. Okay, he lives on a land that is about a thousand miles away from the North Pole. Okay. <laughs> and Bunky is going on a mission to save Christmas. So, Christmas is always the moment of joys. If you're looking for the jolly faces, you have to go to wait for Christmas. But it seems to me that Bunky's Christmas would be threatened if we would not come as a hero to rescue Christmas. Could you please uh, speculate a little bit on the story? Thank you so much. I see you're familiar with Bunky's location. And as, as the novel tells us, both who know where Bunky is located are those who have this childlike magic heart. So that's what you have, because you know his location. And uh, indeed, Bunky will be having a very tough time unless, you know, it's, he has to struggle with himself. So Christmas, Bunky's Christmas will be all about this struggle with himself and finding this inner strength to carry out the task he should, even though he is being stopped mainly by himself. <laughs> and I, feel, I thought it is so relatable because we are we don't need any antagonists. We are always stopped by our inner struggles, our fears, our worries, uncertainties, and the same will be with Bunky. So his Christmas will be indeed threatened if he will not uh, uh, spring into action and somehow step beyond himself or what he thinks that he can do. But he has so so how it happened. Christmas is coming. Bunky is writing a letter to Santa. Everybody gathered for uh -huh. Christmas Eve. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then suddenly, Christmas Eve, on Christmas night, it turns out that everybody received a wrong gift. Okay. Bunky is really not pleased with anything. Okay. And then it, it, it gets even worse because on the next day, they go for a sleigh ride with Rodney and Sam, who are here with me. And it turns out that Bunky encounters Rudolph the reindeer. And Rudolph asks Bunky to save Christmas because Santa Claus's sleigh is broken. And there won't be any Christmas unless Bunky springs Comes to the rescue. <laughs> yes, yes. And Bunky's grumpy 
because he has three days. There is no school. He can finally sleep. He can finally relax. There's no homework. And here it goes. He, he, he doesn't want the world to give him any trouble, but, but he has to somehow undergo this inner struggle and then maybe he will succeed, maybe not. I mean, it's quite complex. And I, I, like, want I like the way you do that. It is. I, I ask you to explain it because you don't want to tell the whole plot. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a quite a complex tale. But I hope that the readers will not be disappointed with the story and of course with Pat, who is in fact a very brave person because my idea was to show that we all carry imperfections within us and it's, it's okay. It's okay to accept them as long as we strive to be noble and as long as we are willing to to take up this inner fight with ourselves to, to improve. <laughs> So, uh, how did you come up with the idea of creating such a complex, but also likable character? <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, so the character, honestly, <laughs> Banky is, is, is <laughs> it was easy because Banky is very similar to me, to my friends, to my family, so this is, this is us. <laughs> but also, I, I really feel like we are surrounded by the superhero culture, and especially the youngest readers. As, as I was uh -huh. growing up, it, it began. And I felt like, my goodness, everybody's so perfect, so beautiful, so, 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 so. And and I can't do this, I can't do that. I must be lacking some. And I think that many young readers are left with this. Children nowadays, they see the superhero culture and they cannot relate to anybody there. So I wanted to create Banky for them especially, and for all the adults who feel like, like me. <laughs> And uh, Banky is this very Nikat. He's grumpy sometimes, he's possessed, he's, he's throwing a tantrum in the middle of the living room on Christmas night. And, and it's okay because in, inside he wants to be good. He, he's aware that he made something wrong. He knows how to apologize. He, he strives to be better. He's really loving, warm inside. So, so I think that everybody can relate to him. Yeah, and I, I can see myself also friend. in Banky. I mean, from yeah. a parent's perspective, I have three children, so mm -hmm. I can see myself through it. So reading mm -hmm. Bunky will ultimately take me back to yes. uh, the years when my kids mm -hmm. were very little and mm -hmm. we would wait for Santa on Christmas Eve. And then since oh. there's no snow, it's not snowing in Florida, but Santa would be coming to the chimney, you know? And he <laughs> <would. it's not laughs> like that. He would. And in Banky's, in Banky and the One, Santa Claus is a little bit weary this year. So what he does, he no longer uses the chimney, but he uses this magic powder that he, he, he just throws a little bit of this magic powder at the wall and the wall disappears and he can enter the living room. And this is how he appears. <laughs> so, so, so does Banky fight with Rudolph to get to the sleigh? <laughs> 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 uh, actually, no, because Banky is is so charmed by Rudolph. He he he. Rudolf even allows Banky to pet him, and I think this is everybody's dream to touch Rudolf the reindeer and pet him. Mm. And and Banky, from petting uh, Rudolf, he he will gradually undergo a change, and and he will understand what his heart really wants. That but. Sometimes we are grumpy and or, or we are worried about the future and in fact we are braver than we know we are. So <laughs> we will be friends. You know, yeah. I, I visited your website, Alexandra, and there's a quote <laughs> that I I read from your site. Uh, it's a you. quote from Anthony Chola, which says Oh yes. It is so that I lived with my characters. I could oh, see yes. myself into it too as a writer. So let me ask you this specific question. Mm -hmm. Do you live with your character? Obviously, practically. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> 24 but, but, hours. But, and, and, and the more deeper inner meaning of this. Of course. Of course. Of course. Thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel very connected with my characters also on an emotional level. Like, I feel, for instance, when I feel, first of all, when I've been writing this book, I knew exactly how I want to see the plot end. But still, my characters would guide me and I would let them. I think it happens to every writer. And I, I feel such a connection with them. Like, I wouldn't even dare to harm them in any way or, or 
crow out in any way because I, I, I wouldn't be able to, to survive it. And, and I feel that I really feel throughout the novel, I feel Banky's emotions, his cousin's emotions, which are very complex. I feel that they are part of me. And uh, I, I wanted to convey through them these values, these thoughts that also are within me. So I think that we are interconnected in, in this uh, mutual way. And, and I was thinking, if I may, I, I can also show you Rudolf the reindeer, who's also living with me. Put <laughs> <laughs> off the deer, and the reindeer's over with you too. Oh, yeah, I, I can bring now? He's here. He's here. Okay. I'm, I'm bringing him. All right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but Rudolph is the only character whom I didn't make myself. But nevertheless, I really love him <laughs> so much. I, I love can him imagine. So Rudolph looks so adorable. Oh, you thank know. you. He's very important in the story. Very important. Oh. And he's Banky's friend. <laughs> <laughs> so can, we are all set uh, for Christmas. <laughs> uh -huh. So, Alessandro, I can see that um, it's not only I or some of the friends that you have on the social media mm. who have fallen in love with Banky. It oh, appears thank you also, so much. And the little where we were, they have recognized your work. As a matter of fact, I see that you've won a more pretty close to 10 awards, including one yes, yes. book fest award and another one, which is the outstanding creator <laughs> award. How did you feel when you were getting all these awards? Thank you so much. Honestly, I am so shocked that I feel I watch it like a movie. And I was like, wow somebody received this award it must be banky but you know for me it was a very difficult thing to process that these are awards that i'm winning and of course they are they are more than i could ever dream of more than i could ever imagine that would happen because uh -huh. i wrote this book to to bring some joy some some warmth to others to share the world that I imagined would be perfect and to share this character who could be everybody's friend, I hope. And when I saw that uh, uh, there are the readers and, and judges and, and audience in general, I saw that they are really becoming Banky's friends uh, and that this book makes them happy. It's just, I, I, I felt like the happiest person in the world and the same with the awards. I just, I, I, I'm speechless still because it's, it's really so wonderful to be true. It's like magic happening. Congratulations. Yeah. Let me ask you something. <laughs> when, uh, you were born in Lublin, and uh, Poland, right? Were uh, you born there? No. <laughs> I, I've been born in, uh, in Genoa, in Italy. Okay. But I've spent uh, we, almost all my life in Lublin. Okay. So growing up, did you realize that you were going to be an author? uh absolutely yes <laughs> thank you so much honestly when i was uh, three years old my mom taught me how to read and write she would read and write with me all the time and uh -huh. then when i was four i said to myself i really i really what i want to do in life i want to be a writer i just felt so deeply that i can process the world through writing i can't do it in any other way only through writing and mm -hmm. and i knew that i can share something and and I started writing my diary and I wrote my first, so to speak, novel when I was four and I just insisted from now on, I just dreamt about it so badly. So it was a dream and this dream came true just like in Banky's Fairyland. <laughs> so how long did it take you to conceive this novel? Thank you so much. So uh, the story started uh, in my mind. Uh, in May, in the springtime, paradoxically, <laughs> 2019. Okay. And uh, I was in London attending uh -huh. a conference and everybody went to visit the British Museum and, and uh, we went too. And then there was a store with, with mascots and I saw this blue hippo who wasn't Banky. 
but he reminded me of Banky, and this is how Banky was born. <laughs> and this, this people had a very strange, I mean, critical face expression. I've never seen a flash mascot for children with such a face expression. Like he was very kind of grumpy, mm -hmm. critical, uh, ironical, but also a welcoming. And I thought he's very human-like. Mm -hmm. He's like us. And mm -hmm. I thought there must be a story behind him. Okay. And then I started thinking, and Banky was born, and I, I have the origin of Hippo too, I brought him before. And I started writing <laughs> from from this time onwards. Okay. So, this, yeah. so I know you say you have another project, which is more an academic work. Yes. W would be published soon, you say? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank Could you, you so share much. a little bit with us what, what kind of... Well. Thank you. So, uh, uh, thank you. So this is, uh, uh, I'm also writing the second part of Banky's Adventures, but I think that we will see this in the spring time. Uh -huh. But now in January, actually, I think yesterday, uh, uh, yeah, the book went into the press. So uh, really? in January we will have, this, yeah, <laughs> it was a, we will have this very uh, new book and it's uh, dedicated to, uh, women's literary portraits okay. uh, in the Victorian times and in the neo-Victorian novel. Okay. But I didn't want it to be a strictly academic book. Even if it's an academic project, I, I strived my best to write it in such a way that every literature lover could just open the book and enjoy it. So, so that everybody can read it. <laughs> so, uh, is it fair if I say there is a subgenre in this academic work, which is historical fiction or something like that, um, or creative nonfiction? This, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, because definitely it's nonfiction. There's, there, it's, it's, it's a historical genre uh, mingled with literature because there's a lot of history. Okay. Somehow it's true. Somehow okay. it became a, a historical yeah. novel, a, a book. But uh, I selected a couple of novels, Victorian and Neo-Victorian, which are modern revisions of the Victorian genre. And I try to present selected female characters in terms of the social cultural position, in terms mm. of the fashion outfit. And I really wanted to present, uh, to celebrate them. I really wanted to concentrate on, on these positive aspects of, right. of these uh, Victorian women and uh, on, on the victories, on, on some joys, because I think that everything is very important. But there were so many books written about uh, uh, the misfortunes, which are also very important, of, of these Victorian women. I wanted to celebrate them too and, and show how they could glow and thrive, some of them. So I wanted to offer this, this more hopeful vision of, of Victorian femininity and Let I select my something. favorite novels. <laughs> Does a Victorian woman mm -hmm. also are uh, extremely, like I would say that is one of the soldiers, the foot soldiers and the trenches and the trenches and the fight mm -hmm. for, uh, and the feminist movement is what you're saying? Because mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and, and, and also, and also what is very interesting about them I always think that these Victorian women are the best, so to speak, very easily to study society as a whole, because they are always in between, between the domestic, between the public, always somewhere in between, so they really embrace everything. And it's so fascinating to study them. Because I know great uh, uh, writers, novelists, female mm -hmm. novelists, like Shimamenda Ugosi, who mm -hmm. And then writers like uh, Edwidge Stantikal, writers like <laughs> Alice Walker. These, oh, yes. these are the authors at the forefront of this feminist movement. Yes, oh, okay. Alice Walker is. Alice Walker is, is, is always is, is wonderful and always leaves such a such a scar in my heart because the, her stories are just just moving so deeply. Mm. It's impossible to forget them. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, Alexandra, at, at, every time I have a, an author and a conversation at some point, we switch mm -hmm. from talking about literature, but and yeah. then we <laughs> something cozier because I know we humans, right? 
Oh, and yeah. I know you're Polish. So can you really <laughs> share with the audience anything about Polish food, you know? Oh, perfect. I love, thank you so much. I love talking about food. I, I can talk about food for an hour. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Maybe that's enough to write a cooking book, right? <laughs> yes, I think so. Another product, actually in banking the ones, if I, if I may just to, to add this, uh, he cooks a lot and there are there there is a, there are like three or four recipes actual recipes in the book so 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 thank you uh my favorite polish dish i, I don't know maybe it became international but it's polish and i i saw that it's worldwide but it's a uh, potato pancakes okay potato pancakes is my, my favorite polish how, dish. how does it could you give us the recipe a little bit of uh, of course, so, so you need, of course, some grated potatoes right. and uh, an egg right. and you can add some flour mm. and some little onions right. like chopped into pieces right. and, of course, salt and pepper and, uh -huh. and mix it all uh -huh. and then pour, you know, some oil on the frying pan and, uh, you know, you, you can form like circles uh -huh. out of all of it and, and put the circles on the frying pan and just fry it and you have this very delicious uh, little potato pancakes so they are wonderful in winter they are very delicious with a salad with um, uh, tomatoes as well and uh, do you have that yeah, in formal dinner or you have that and as part of the breakfast i i think we have always for dinner it's always dinner, for dinner. Okay. yeah or lunch yes yeah, yeah and of course polish dish which is very famous and of course everybody knows it it's pierogi <laughs> yeah it's, it's uh, so so you have this it's like cake and and inside this cake you can have they can be sweet they can be salty really? however you want them okay yes yes there is also a sweet version of pierogi because i think that the most famous version is the one which, which is salty with some uh, uh and, and the sweet version is perfect too, with jam, with cherries, wow. uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, even with chocolate cream. <laughs> wow. So there are different kinds of pierogi <laughs> and they are so, very good for the winter season because they are like, you feel like you are, uh, you, you, you've eaten quite a lot. <laughs> and and uh, so pierogi, potato pancakes, ah, there is also this delicious, um, soup in Poland, which I recommend everybody who would like to visit Poland. It's called Żurek. And really? Żurek, <laughs> it's a soup with an egg. There are eggs inside. And what is the best about this soup is that it is um, offered to each person in uh -huh. a piece of bread. It's like half of the bread and uh, without this filling inside. So it's like just, just Bread like this formed as uh -huh. a plate, okay. and the soup is inside. It's inside. And okay. firstly, you, yeah. And firstly, you eat the soup, and then you can eat the bread. And you know what? <laughs> there's uh, there's all uh, uh, you know very popular uh, uh, fast food chain in the United States called I don't know if you have it in Poland. It's called Panera Bread, and it, it, if you go in and you order that a, a particular soup, which is called broccoli cheddar. But the same thing I just said, it's served inside of a bread, you know, like, like Oh, you know, really? They put it right inside of it, you know, and, and, and you can order oh. it. So. Yo. <laughs> so, so, so it must be, must be, they must be somehow related. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably so, yeah. All right, so we talk about food. Now, what about, for example, what is your favorite music genre? Music. Oh, thank you so much. So I'm, I'm honestly, I'm trying to be, Kind of a versatile listener, and <laughs> and of course uh, it, it depends on on many factors. For instance, I I I, I resort to different music when I'm writing, when I'm so for different activities. But uh, uh, I really love, for instance, jazz, and I also love classical music, jazz. But also I love this this. Uh, rock music as well and rock and roll and and honestly one of my best uh, favorites uh, i think times uh, one of the periods during which i would love to leave if i could leave somewhere else 
uh, in the past is the rainy Paris of the 20s from midnight in Paris. <laughs> yes, and the music from this epoch. So the oh. 20s, the 30s, this music is something that really speaks to my heart. Just okay. makes me feel so peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, we've been talking for a while now. And let's go back to a little bit true. Let me ask you this specific question, Alexandra. Yeah, thank okay, you. So who, okay. I know writers, we are not just writers. We also mm. avid readers. Now, yeah. if I were to ask you who you would consider as your favorite author of all time, all time. who that person is, I would tell you without a moment of hesitation, it's Oscar Wilde. Who? Uh, Oscar Wilde. Okay. Oscar Wilde. I just adore him uh, for his uh, for his intelligence and for his unique writing style, which will never be copied any 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 time in the history of the world. Okay. <laughs> and I love his plays, which are so intelligent and so witty and and beyond perfection. So he, he would be my, my, my choice as, a, as, a, as an artist, as a writer, as a personality. Wow. <laughs> he's, he's just like a walking kind of personality. Like, like, okay. like he, he, he wanted to live his life as, as, as art. And I think that he turned himself into art too. Okay. <laughs> so we're winding down into uh, my last question. Mm -hmm. uh, Alessandra, if I... Okay, if I were to, if, if someone, mm -hmm. uh, an author, mm -hmm. or any writer would like to embark upon a journey to, mm -hmm. to, to be so creative and putting together such an impeccable uh, book, Bunky mm -hmm. and the Wrongs. So, so right. what lesson would you give that writer? An advice, yeah, so it's okay to, uh, what yeah. kind of ad 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 advice? Okay. Advice, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so uh, can I be can I be controversial? <laughs> I want, <laughs> yes, I, I yes. want to be very controversial. I promise. Okay, so so so, thank you so much. So I would be okay. I my advice would be that this this person who has this idea for for his or her novel shouldn't ask for advice <laughs> because I saw that many of my colleagues. Uh, asking for advice very often, and, uh -huh. and and I understand everybody needs that. I did too. But at yeah. some point, this book uh, stops being theirs, but it becomes like what other people told uh -huh. uh, this person to write. And and if you if you really write from your heart, I would say just just write it as you feel it, and you will see you will find your audience. You will find the readers who will appreciate you and understand you, because because there are so many people, and everybody needs their own author everybody needs their own reader like there are people who will understand connect with each other there are different books for everybody they are not better not worse just just different for every person for so everybody. i would say just just do it from your heart yeah? just don't don't mind that's it, great just, would you would you please uh, <laughs> uh, uh, show the audience the, the uh the cover of the book again uh the book of cover of course of course yeah. Here okay is. bunky and the wand interesting you critically acclaimed children book penned by author <laughs> impeccable author prolific writer thank you so much alexandra <laughs> trinitska thank you so much for this 